This Week at NASA. Final preparations continue at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida for the launch of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory. MSL is scheduled to embark on its journey to the Red Planet on November 26th. When it arrives at Gale Crater next August, Curiosity Rover's 10 instruments will investigate whether that area of Mars could ever have sustained microbial life. Now that Expedition 29 crew members Mike Bossom, Satoshi Furukawa, and Sergei Volkov are back on Earth, the three remaining residents of the International Space Station are getting ready to welcome another trio to Expedition 30. Scheduled to join Dan Burbank, Anton Shkoplerov, and Anatoly Ivanishin on December 23rd is NASA's Don Pettit, the European Space Agency's Andrei Kuypers, and cosmonaut Oleg Kononenko. Now into its 12th year of continuous human presence, the world's only laboratory in microgravity has led to breakthroughs in science and technology that are improving our quality of life here on Earth. Also changing lives is a spin-off of important equipment aboard the ISS. Canadarm, Canadarm2, and Dexter, the Canadian Space Agency's family of heavy-lifting space robots on board the ISS, have borne NeuroArm, the world's first robot capable of performing surgery inside magnetic resonance machines. Among the dozens of patients helped by NeuroArm is Paige Nickerson of Calgary, Alberta, from whose brain NeuroArm successfully removed an egg-shaped tumor. Administrator Charlie Bolden was at the Marshall Space Flight Center for a first-hand look at work on NASA's new space launch system, the rocket that'll make deep space missions possible. Bolden toured Marshall's Thrust Vector Control Test Lab, as well as the Hardware in the Loop Simulation Lab. Here, engineers are developing and testing the new rocket's guidance, navigation and control software, and avionics and thrust vector control hardware. This integrated propulsion testbed, using digital computer models, demonstrates real-time flight control of the launch vehicle during ascent. What we're able to do in this facility is take the hardware, test it out a little bit, take the software, test it out a little bit, and marry them up right here in the sim lab. So that, you know, we're gonna have real live flight hardware with real live flight software married up in this facility. So that if there's something that's gonna go wrong, we discover it here in Huntsville before we take it to Florida and put it on a vehicle. The Marshall Center is leading design and development of the space launch system. The new heavy lift launch vehicle will expand human presence beyond low Earth orbit and enable new missions of exploration across the solar system. Its first full-scale test flight is set for 2017. Three, two, one. The Mighty Eagle, NASA's robotic lander designed to explore the surface of the moon, asteroids, and other destinations, performed a successful altitude test flight at the Redstone Test Center on Redstone Arsenal in Huntsville. As directed, the lander hovered, flew up to 100 feet, before putting down safely at the test site. Once again, a nationwide survey ranks NASA among the best places to work in the federal government at number five. The survey, conducted by the nonprofit Nonpartisan Partnership for Public Service, polled more than 276,000 federal workers. Placing first among NASA centers was Stennis, which out of 240 organizations within the federal government, ranked number two. Stennis also topped the list of all federal organizations for employee empowerment, fairness, and support for diversity. It seemed to me that this idea could be expanded, it could be taken to the next level. Matthew Ritzko, a financial manager at the Goddard Space Flight Center, is the winner of the third annual White House Save Award, a contest that solicits cost-cutting ideas from federal employees. Ritzko proposed establishing a centralized tool repository or lending library for NASA employees to access when developing and building spaceflight projects. Ritzko's plan is being included in the White House's annual budget request. The Women at NASA website has expanded to include Aspire to Inspire, a new feature aimed at helping middle school girls explore education and careers in science technology, engineering, and mathematics.
five videos explore the careers and backgrounds of early career women who work for NASA in each of the STEM fields. Aspire to Inspire also lists community organizations and NASA-affiliated outreach programs that emphasize STEM. Four Twitter feeds enable site visitors to interact with the young women featured in the videos. NASA spin-offs are the subject of two new public service announcements airing on NASA TV. Speaking of space technology, do you know that space is hidden all around you? The first features ELP 6409EF from Sony Pictures' new film, Arthur Christmas. Our animated protagonist illustrates how NASA-developed space technologies are making our lives better here on Earth. Hi, I'm Nora Jones. And I'm Pierce Sellers. And Grammy-winning singer-songwriter Nora Jones teams up with astronaut Pierce Sellers on the second PSA. Jones and Sellers recorded their message in the NASA TV studio in Washington. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. After Jones singing of America the Beautiful at the recent Congressional Gold Medal Award ceremony on Capitol Hill. From sea to shining sea. And while you ate Thanksgiving dinner and watched football on TV, NASA astronaut Dan Burbank, and Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkoplerov and Anatoly Ivanishin passed the irradiated smoked turkey, thermostatable yams, and freeze dried green beans, plenty of vegetables, just like the pilgrims. Their International Space Station Meal of Thanks also included NASA's own cornbread dressing, home style potatoes, and some cranberries for dessert, what could be better than cherry blueberry cobbler? And the best view from any Thanksgiving table anywhere. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.